Rick, we know that, you know, there's some people that just, they just think that, that inflation comes down after unemployment goes up. So we're not going to see inflation come down until we get an uptick uh, in, in uh, unemployment. So there are people that probably would like a little bit cooler number, but uh, this is, uh, you only got 10 seconds to respond. We might as well just wait now until we see what the number is, right? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm like Stephanie. I want to see people get jobs. So however that plays into the hand of the Fed, that's their concern. And April, non-farm payrolls expanded much less than expected, 175,000. We're looking for a number much closer to 250,000. And at least up to this point, in the rearview mirror, 303,000, uh, there, there are revisions, minus 22,000 for a two-month span. Now, if you look at manufacturing, it went from zero to 8,000, so there is some improvement. And by the way, that 303,000 last month went up 315,000, which means last month's 315,000 was the best since January of 23. Then we go to 175,000, which actually is the weakest since October, October of last year. Now, let's go to the unemployment rate. 3.9 moved up one tick from 3.8, 3.9, it equals February. And to find a higher level than that, you have to go to the 4% in January of 22. And to be fair, uh, the 3.9% represents the 27th consecutive month under 4%. All right, now let's get to the average hourly earnings, shall we? Up two-tenths, one-tenth less than expected. It equals February to find a lower number. Boy, you have to go back a long way. To find a one-tenth number, you have to go to February of 22. There's been several other two-tenths of a percent increases. Year over year, below 4%, below 4%. 3.9%. 3.9% equals June of 21. To find a lower one, boy, you go back to May of 21 when it was 2.3%. What a drop there, huh? Now, let's look at average hourly earnings. Average hourly earnings right now uh, on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, average hourly hours. We just did the earnings on the hours. 34.3, that's a down tick, but we've had a lot of 34.3s. Uh, it equals February, 34.2 was January. Then it moved back up a bit, so it has escalated from 34.2 in the beginning of the year, hovering at a level. Don't see that this one makes much difference. If we look at the labor force participation rate, it's hanging very steady here at 62.7. That was last month. That was this month, uh, of course, and prior to that, if you wanted to find a higher level, of participation. It would have been 62.8. That would have been in November of last year. And finally, the U6, the underemployment rate. Many people really pay close attention to this. Uh, 7.3 last month, and that was the highest going all the way back to November 21. It moved even higher, 7.4, which also goes back to November 21 because at that point in time it was 7.7. .7. Interest rates have dropped, which makes a lot of sense at this point. Uh, and as Stephanie uh, talked about, I'll reiterate, listen, the Fed has its issues. Whether employment goes up or down doesn't necessarily mean inflation is going to follow. Uh, Powell, during his press conference, when he was talking about owner's equivalent rent, finally conceded that, hey, it's hard to get any GPS here because post-COVID, there, there's long lags we never counted on. And I think that is a good sentence to keep in mind for everything because these long lags might lead to a spot that rhymes with pre-COVID but doesn't necessarily equal pre-COVID.